Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. So happy you are here. My goal with this channel is to bring inspirational speakers to the mic in the field of yoga, massage, body work, and beyond. Follow us at Native Yoga and check us out at nativeyogacenter.com. All right, let's begin. Hello, my name is Todd McLaughlin. Welcome to Native Yoga Toddcast. Today, Magnus Appleberg. He lives in Finland. Thank you, Frank Kappas, for introducing me to Magnus. You got to check him out. Oh my gosh, you got, I mean, you're, you're here, so you're listening. You made it this far. Go all the way through. Go all the way to the end. Magnus is incredible. What a great storyteller. I feel like his experience with cold water plunging, Ashtanga yoga, and Vipassana meditation is just so great. You got to check him out on his website, magnusappleberg.com. Follow him on Instagram at Ice Lab Method. Uh, he has a cold therapy online course uh, called at coldexposurecourse.com titled Eliminate Stress and Pain and Reach a New Level of Focus, Energy, and Physical Well-Being in the Next 30 Days. He's also written a book called Ice Cold Peace of Mind. Unfortunately, not in English yet, but you're going to get a good taste of what Magnus is up to living on an island in the archipelago of Finland. Oh my gosh, you got to hear this. All right, so without any, without any more hesitation, and uh, Magnus, thank you so much. Dug it. Love this. Thank you. All right, let's begin. Wow, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to meet and speak with Magnus Appleberg. And how this came about, if you have not had a chance to listen to a recent episode with Frank Kappas, who lives in Finland and is an Ashtanga yoga teacher, he was kind enough uh, when I asked him, uh, is there anybody that you think would be, you know, I could talk to? And he said, you got to speak with my friend Magnus. And so here we are. And Magnus, thank you so much. You're in Finland. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so delighted to have this opportunity to talk with you. How, how's your day going so far? I think it's around about 1.30 there. So I think you're in your, the afternoon in Finland. How, how are things going for you today? Well, uh, hi, Todd. It, it's really my honor to be <laughs> here. Uh, things are going pretty windy. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, getting closer to zero. And uh, the sea is is still six degrees. So I, I'm giving all these nature reports because uh, uh, with my wife we are living on an island in the archipelago, uh, like uh, 30, 40 kilometers from Helsinki. Wow! So we are really in the middle of nature all the time. Wow! I <clears throat> are you? How far away is the island from the mainland? No, it's pretty close to the mainland. So with the boat, uh, I get there you know, like in five minutes. Gotcha. And in the winter, are you still able to pass? Are, does that boat go back and forth in the middle of winter? Or is it the type of thing you have to have all your supplies ready to go and you, you might have to <laughs> hunker down for, for a while? Now, it, it's like for the last two winters, we had... Uh, ice here uh, in front of us for uh, only a week or, or, or two uh, because the winters has been so mild mm. in normal wise uh, you you walk on the ice for for a couple of months here wow but but now now it's been really lousy winters in, in one way but it makes it easier to swim of course you don't have to cut your hole in the ice <laughs> oh man well the Mostly by boat, even through the winter. I have an aluminum boat, uh, which g breaks the ice uh, up to three centimeter. Wow. Uh, I live in Florida. <clears throat> the thought of ice, <laughs> the thought of ice <laughs> is um, a very foreign concept. I, I grew up here and I didn't even see snow until I was, I think I was 18 or 19 was the first time I actually got up north and, and saw snow. And so when I see, when I, I've been watching you on Instagram and seeing some of your videos with you swimming 
in the under the ice on top of the ice uh i just i don't even know where to begin you know because when it when the water temperature here gets down like in you know mid 70s you know i'm putting a wetsuit on and you know the wind is blowing <laughs> yeah i figured you would laugh at me i figured you'd have to laugh at that right you know because because I, I grew up in such a different type of climate and I love the fact that you just use the terminology like, you know, because the winters have not been extremely cold for you that you said like, you know, these, the winters have, they haven't been very good. Like you're seeking, you almost want it to get colder. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I have so many questions for you because, you know, as soon as I get into colder weather, my fingers start tingling and I just, I have a challenge. I just, I haven't uh, gotten acclimated to it. Can you tell me a little bit about how, is this something that you grew up with? And when you were a young child, someone said, let's go swimming or later on in life, did you get this idea? Like, you know, I'm just going to go in. I, I've been away. For, I, it, yeah. Tell me how you got started with this. Yeah. It, well, it, it's a, it, it's a normal thing in, in, in Finland. We have this sauna, of course, you've heard about sauna, yes. a really hot, hot steam room. Uh, and, uh, it, in the winter, we always combined it with uh, uh, going into the ice hole. Well, always and always. But uh, like, like 20 years ago, I, I, st I started this, this habit uh, of, of sauna and ice swim. But, but it was kind of uh, no matter how hard I or often I, I practiced, I couldn't swim more than 50 meters. And it was like, oh, my God, I, I can't move anymore. I got to get up. Yes. Yes. Uh, more than like, so you, you try to swim and you could get about 50 mm. meters, but am I correct in hearing that you, I believe Frank mentioned, or either I read on your website that you've been able to stay in that freezing cold water for up to an hour. Is, is that correct? That's correct. A whole that's hour? Correct. I just don't see how that's possible. <laughs> well it's a it's a question of adaptation and, and the adaptation is a question of, of how you how to kind of in which direction you steer your physiology yeah yeah so it is a slow gradual process of of building up like if i went and visited you tomorrow in finland and we got a good ice storm and you said, come with me in the water. There's no way I would make it an hour, right? Like, w wouldn't I die? I mean, no, no. honestly, like. You would, you, would, you would die, like. In, <laughs> honestly, you would be seriously injured in 10 minutes. And yeah. You would be numbed. You, you would have to. Uh, you would be unconscious because your system is not adapted to it. Wow. You can't force the adaptation. But the, yeah. the adaptation can be amazingly uh, fast mm. so i i had persons where i do i do these uh, ret weekend retreats where we go into the cold like during one weekend for five times R really i mean we, we prepare and then we try to do it in in a good good way so uh after staying like 40 seconds some people come screaming out and this is not possible the first time but then the, the last time they might stay in five minutes, seven minutes, and it's, everything's cool. Wow. Wow. So you, you, it's a learning process. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, if you at that, for you at that point, was it a goal to stay there for one hour? Was that like a, a challenge that you had set for yourself? Had you, had you built Actually, up? It was, it was, it was because it was three years ago when I turned 60. So, you know, this yogi tradition about doing, doing as many back bends, back drops as the uh, years you are turning. So I thought 60 back drops. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so what about sitting for 60 minutes? Yes. 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 So I, I start I started to do a, a serious practice for that. Before that, my maximum was thirty minutes. Wow, that's incredible! So I, I, yeah. I, 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 
I, it, it was in August. I had been all the summer swimming in, in, in the warm warm water. For us, warm water is fifty degrees, seventy degrees, and and uh, above. I don't know what that's in Fahrenheit, but uh, yes, it's a bit, it's a bit more. Uh, I hear you. So, yeah. So I, the first session was ten minutes, and I gradually, gradually got by. So I got got the, till uh, in five weeks. I got. To 45 minutes without any problems wow. but then i had only a couple of days left so so the the, the jump from 45 to 16 minutes was uh, quite a challenge oh i can't I, 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 it, I felt slightly cold afterwards oh my god i did <laughs> like slightly cold <laughs> slightly cold in the way were you being medically supervised when you would do this or do you is this the sort of thing that you always have somebody no, if, on if, land if, that if watching uh, even tougher, I had my wife. Oh, <laughs> well, gosh, yeah. I mean, was she was she wanting you to achieve this, or was there a part of her? No, that... <laughs> she, she didn't want me to do it, but she 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 she, she know she knows me for more than thirty years, so yeah, she, yeah. she realized that no resisting here. So it just, she was just open your eyes. I want to see that your eyes are yeah, not rolling. Good. You can continue. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, but really it, yeah. it might it might uh it might might uh, sound pretty much but it, it's not it, it's a different thing to sit in the winter in the, the in the ice hole because then the outside temperature is minus and there's always a wind and so on. This was I was sitting in a chest freezer with, with uh, uh, ice cold water mixed with a lot of ice. So it was steady at zero degrees all the time. The mm. ice didn't melt. Gotcha. So then when you're sitting indoors, your, your, your head is in room temperature. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's different. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Oh, man. So what are you a student or a friend or a colleague of Wim Hof? No. Okay. No, uh, I be I I know Wings work since fifteen years, but I never really tried it. Yeah. Uh, because of his strong uh, breathing technique, because like uh, thirty years ago uh, or even more, I did a lot of these uh, hyperventilation uh, things, like rebirthing, holotropic breathing, uh, and uh, uh, comes with m m many brands. And it's a very strong cathartic work, and uh, it's not my cup of tea anymore. Yeah. I think it's like I've been there, I've done it, I'm not going back. So what I'm doing is actually 180 degrees in the different uh, opposite direction. So uh, how I prepare for the cold is like very slow, very long exhalations to to cool cool down my uh, by an autonomous nerve system but it, it's like it, it's a very very simple prin principle you know in pranayama we breathe in kind of uh, uh half the half the amount that we breathe out so we breathe in one or, or, or let's say four counts we breathe out eight so what about breathing out as long as possible that makes it really interesting and then you get in a very much different state. And when you hit the cold, you you strive to get back to that state as soon as possible, mm. because the the first gasp of the ice cold water is non non negotiable. Everybody mm. gets it. Mm. But the thing is, how fast do you get back into a relaxed state? So wow. the adaptation yeah. take, take place. Interesting. So is this, sorry, I'm, uh, just technically, your nose breathing, mouth closed? Nope. In, yeah. In through no, nose? No, no, yeah. Always breathing in through my nose and breathing out with different kind of sounds, for example, or through my nose, or using ujjayi breath, mm. like in Ashtanga yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I'm experimenting with, oh. uh, with, with yeah. many things, wow. even with mantra, like yeah. a simple om. Yeah. Yeah. Very long, long. That's so interesting, Magnus, because it sounds like you're just like in the laboratory, 
just yeah, figuring it out in the moment. Well, what if I try this? What if I try that? What type of effect for, does it yeah. have on my nervous system? And that's incredible. Is it, the it, I, Just to go back a little bit, though, on that one hour set um, in the ice, what was... Um, is that is that a world record of some sorts, or was it documented, no, or is no, this purely just post. a self? This is a self-induced, like this is just for me, and I'm not. I don't have a news crew on me, or, or no, 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 yeah, no. gotcha. All right, that's for me. That's All for right. Me. Do you have any, because one hour, yeah. one hour is still nothing. The world record of ice bath is that two hours thirty five minutes, something like that. Mm, gotcha. And that's heavy. That's really heavy. That's really heavy. Yeah. It, what are your, I recently, I, I love, I read a book by James Nestor called Breath. And then I went back to yes. one of his other books called Deep, where he chronicles the, you know, the free diving champions. And yeah, I read that too. Yeah, isn't that amazing? And uh, it's so fascinating because what you're talking about, just in terms of what you're attempting to do with being able to regulate your nervous system in that cold environment and what free diving attempts to do with breath holding and going incredibly yes. deep and holding for yeah. an incredibly long period of time. And yeah, so yeah. My, my first touch with free, free diving was actually more than 20, uh, 20 years ago. And now recently I, I, I taken up free diving in a small scale again with, with, with um, uh, my teacher, Johanna Nordblad, who, who has done the world record in ice diving. Wow. So, you trained. She went from wow. one ice hole to another under the ice in only swim trunk, swim trunks and goggles, no fin, no flippers, uh, one hundred three meters Holy under the God. ice. She's a world record yeah. holder. She's tough. She's tough. And you're training with her. We, yeah, we, I, we did done some free diving under her. In the <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we we we. We done some cold exposure together, just just enjoying it, and then sh sharing sharing uh, tips uh, of of how how to practice and how to adapt and uh, and breath uh, carbon dioxide everything. Just she's inspiring. Yeah, amazing. It sounds like it. Now, what what is your experience with yoga and Ashtanga yoga? So I, I've been doing uh, daily practice Ashtanga yoga for 23 years. And nice. Frank was actually my first teacher. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and he got me into Vipassana meditation also. So me and wife, we have done three 10 days uh, retreats and, and we, we do Vipassana daily. But it's like uh, for 20 years now. But, but the... the uh, rigorous uh, ashtanga practice rigorous vipassana practice it's at some point you know you you start wondering hey what about if i start start doing something different i uh, still following the same direction i mean uh, following the breath uh, and uh, researching about ph physiology what, what what am i actually physiology do, doing when I'm doing this practice, how can I tip it even further on? And how does that change my life? What, what different uh, kind of practice can I do? Or where, where does this take me? So for me, it, it took me to, uh, it's like five years ago or six years ago to a workshop by Simon Borg Olivia the uh, Australian teacher, and uh, he, 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 his concept is like breathe less, stretch less, work less, uh, eat less. Well, that's a very hard thing for me, <laughs> <laughs> and, and move from your core. And so, so the practices we, we did with him, he called it yoga synergy. He, uh, what was first at first sight was like, what on earth are we doing? It makes no sense. And after five sessions, I was, I'm your biggest fan. Wow. And he, he got uh, the chemistry, physiology of, of breathing straight for me. So that actually, the, nice. the, the, the greatest uh, kind of controversy is that the less you breathe, the more 
oxygen your cells get. It is a really so, interesting controversy. Can can you um yeah. can you explain a little bit like breathing less? Yeah, it, well, I, I love it, that. I it, love that you said his philosophy is breathe less, stretch less. So, because when you think in the Ashtanga practice, there's this, there's a tendency more is more, more, is more. <laughs> <laughs> breathe harder, fat, not necessarily faster, but you know more vigorous breathing yeah. and more yeah. vigorous stretching. And um, mm-hmm. so so then on that note. If, if, if I'm going to try to breathe less, so if my practice time, say, would take an hour, and in Ashtanga, I guess we could, in theory, count how many breaths breaths we are prescribed to do within a primary series. Mm-hmm. I've never tried mm-hmm. to count how many breaths there would be, but I bet you, if we were working off the counting system, we could literally come up with a number of how many times we would breathe in and out. And... Mm-hmm. So then the idea, then you're practicing yoga and then what, not Ashtanga style yoga vinyasa, more of like, like less stretching, almost like if I was going to do Paschimottanasana or a less than 10 stretch where I reach for my toes and do a forward bend over my legs, I just wouldn't try to go very deep and just try to breathe really slow. Is that, is that kind of the idea? <clears throat> well, the, the, the idea is to kind of breathe less volume per minute. Mm, gotcha. Because it, it, the, the, the concept behind this is called the Bohr effect. And that was discovered 1904, I mean, really long ago, by Christian Bohr. He could, he could uh, show that uh, uh, for, in order for the cell to get oxygen, so that means that the o- oxygen molecule from, uh, has to jump from the hemoglobin, uh, uh, molecule and, and the hemoglobin molecule is, is clinging to the oxygen mole- molecule uh, with a force uh, that is uh, uh, kind of in uh, not, not not straight line, but it's inver- it's an inverted relation to how much uh, carbon dioxide there is in the blood present. So more the, the more carbon dioxide present in the blood, the easier. The oxygen level, uh, oxygen molecule jumps uh, from the blood to the cell. Mm. Uh, that is, so, so the higher uh, carbon dioxide uh, level you have in your blood, the more oxygen your cells get, and that that is dependent on the uh, uh, volume of breath per minute. Mm. The, the less you breathe, the less you ventilate out the uh, carbon dioxide. Mm. So that's kind of the the key element, not yeah. to ventilate too much. Yes. So I'm te- I'm telling my 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 Ashtanga students uh, that uh, breathe softly, and according to the situation. So when you when you're standing just still in samastiti, you you breathe so that you say you are aware of the sound of the breath, and make it easy, make it nice. Yeah. When you start moving, you you. St- Try to keep it soft and easy all the time. There will come situation where you will bring uh, uh, breathe very strongly, of course. But after that, when the situation comes down, you start you 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 aim for a very calm breath again. So you don't have to breathe that deep, in, uh, except in very exceptional uh, situations. That's yeah. That's fascinating, Magnus. I, I, well, right. I already can't wait to practice after the podcast today <laughs> to to start experimenting. So, can you give me an example of when you say lower volume per minute? And then I I read recently, <coughs> excuse me, in uh, the work that James Nestor did in his breath book that the ideal would be about five to six breaths per minute. Uh, so about a five to six second duration of inhalation to about a five to six second duration of exhalation. When yeah. you're, uh, I, I have tried that too. So I put on a, a metronome uh, to, to yeah. click every yeah. five say, seconds, and I tell you, it's re, really a slow breath. That's a real slow it's breath. Really yeah. So that's one solution. My other solution is uh, you breathe as deeply as you need, not deeper. Ooh. So you keep it light. Yeah. So so I, I think the, the key word here would be breathe light. Yeah. Good point. 
And and so that 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 kind of that kind of debunks the idea of like let's breathe deeper everybody let's force air in and out of the body to oxygenate you know this idea of like we'll get more yeah. energy by and it sounds like what you're learning is that it might not be that, that, it, that it's more no 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 that's it's, it's a very it's, very huge misunderstanding yeah. or based on ignorance mm. because when you re, when you saying like Wim Hof is saying, uh, that uh, oxygenate by breathing deeper and more and more. What you are oxygenating is your blood. That's true, but it's already oxygenated because your your uh, your oxygen saturation can't exceed one hundred percent, and it's for most people around ninety five ninety five already. Mm. Mm. So what what happens is you are ventilating carbon dioxide away from 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 your lungs from your blood, and what happens then you are starting to your cells are starting to suffer from hypoxia, too little oxygen, and they, then your head starts spinning. Uh. Your head doesn't start spinning because you get too much oxygen. It starts spinning because your brain doesn't get any oxygen. Or oxygen. Fascinating. Makes, it's fascinating. And, and I like the fact that you'd brought up uh, that you've, you know, practiced and or experienced different types of breathing, whether it be holotropic or transformational breath, where there is this hyperventilation process. And, you know, sometimes post because the the feeling of that seems either you could call it euphoria or yeah. it can also seem a little intense and uncomfortable. And that you almost like I've been there, done that, like I've done that enough times. It, it, it seems like you have explored that, but you're finding it. Do you, do you sometimes argue that or not argue, but just converse and debate that <clears throat> what is the actual value of that? It, it, is it just a lack of oxygen? So of course you're going to feel a little bit kind of loopy. And yeah. what is the value of just creating loopiness? If, if we think that the loopiness for, for lack of a better term, uh, is is more just like a like a we feel fascinated by that because wow I've never felt that sensation before but if you investigate it further is it actually really great for us is it is it something that's really positive that has some sort of transformational effect what well, it sounds to me as well, if you you've turned well, a corner well, let, let, yeah it, it's only one this uh, hypoxia is only one part of that. And uh, it, it stirs very strong emotions. The, the the very tough breathing it stirs very strong emotions. Uh, it can it can positively lead to to catharsis, which is uh, very often the aim, the goal. And uh, uh, it, it gives you a totally kind of new experience of your own body, and that's all positive things. So uh, I yeah. I'm never arguing with anybody or what is better because I don't know there's no such thing as mm. one size fits all. Yeah, good point. And, and so when, when you when you talk talking about breath work, it's a very large concept. Yeah, and it you is. Always take into consideration what is your goal. What, what what are you aiming for? But the thing is that the the terminology. Uh, around it, it gets screwed up um, but but that's okay because uh, if you know what you're doing what you're aiming for and you see it, it, it's coming it, it's coming that way it's all good it's all good nice Magnus. but, but uh, great point for, for for the last 20 years for for me it's been a guy, uh, 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 because i'm an all or nothing guy most mostly <laughs> yes. but now i see I'm 63, so I'm cooling down a little bit now. So, yes. to be, how little can I do to get into a total state of stillness? Yes. So, for me, the stillness of the mind, the stillness of a whole my being. So, to get even rid of this terminology, body and mind, that, that's kind of splitting yourself up mm. in, into two. And yeah. then you adding your soul, and now you have uh, and spirit. Now you have many, many different parts of you, but it's still all about you. Who are you? 
not differentiating in, in, into a different concept of me, but who are you? So get into this total state of I am. That's the thing. Yes. Well said. Well said. You know, I, I'm curious, you said with your practice in Vipassana, and then just to be respectful of Vipassana, I don't want to, I know there's a certain element of, you know, to learn the technique, you need to go for a 10 day sit, you know, and that type of thing. But just to kind of bring up a couple of ideas here, points that the process of Anapana and observing respiration and the idea of observe the respiration and don't practice pranayama, try to observe respiration without control of respiration and that's such an interesting place to go. What 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 have you found with that? And and when you are practicing, say vipassana, do you try to stay in that realm during that designated practice time of I am not going to slow my breathing down, or does have you been at this for so long that just your natural breath now is a deep yeah. well, slow, a slow? Well, yeah. my my answer is yes and no. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, know, you get these moments in vipassana when when you you notice i'm hardly breathing wow i'm all still my body disappears and then you get attached to that idea of course <laughs> and we, which prevents you to, from returning to it but the, this this thing about when the mind gets so still that the body hardly uses any oxygen then that that is a kind of uh, uh, stillness of your breath but stillness of your breath can be induced by breathing less uh, over an extended time so 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 you get up that your carbon dioxide tolerance higher and higher mm. so it's kind of the noble art of suffocating Mm. That's a term of which uh, Constantine but- Butekos uh, uh, students u- used. So Buteko was a very pioneer in, in the breathing area. So so he 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 was all about breathing less. So so his uh, he his uh, his students were talking about the old noble art of suffocating. Interesting. But when you, when you when you stand when when you can hold that for for some time. And regularly, and then turn to just watching your breath. Mm. You get very fast into the state. Wow, I'm hardly breathing because your carbon dioxide tolerance is so high that your uh, your uh, breath gets less triggered by it. So, because the the impulse to breathe is not from lack of oxygen; it's because of surplus of uh, carbon dioxide. Mm. So, if you get used to higher carbon dioxide. So when you calm down, you really do calm down because you don't actually need to breathe much at all. That's so interesting. I remember coming across a story recently about um, a monk in Tibet where, you know, the, the higher up, the higher, going higher in altitude and the effect that altitude plays on oxygen, carbon dioxide ratios in the blood and the mind <clears throat> that it's that that there's the that's the reason they're going higher <clears throat> up into the mountains because you 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 could sl- almost like there's like a slowing of the mind like just due to the fact that there this this carbon dioxide might build up I suppose which which made sense to me all of a sudden it kind of clicked for me like oh that makes perfect sense that that's why all these yogis were going high up into caves in the mountains because perhaps the thin oxygen up there was creating a state of euphoria. Have you, would you agree with that? Or have you experienced something similar going into the ice? Cause that seems in a similar uh-huh. vein. Like when I, when I think of Tibetans and you hear about Tumo and being able to sit on ice yeah. and melt ice around the body with just breathing, yeah. but it doesn't even seem like to me, you, you, you don't really want to <laughs> melt anything. You almost want to become ice. It sounds like, like you're not even, you're not even looking to like do this really strong breathing thing to try to heat your body up. It's almost like you're, you're like really just becoming one with the ice. A- a- am I, am I getting it right? Am I seeing it right? Or let's see uh, about altitude. I have no personal experience, so I, I can't talk about that, but mm-hmm. uh, about, uh, about this, um, 
this uh, ice cold temperature it, uh le let's see it's a uh it's very tough on 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 your physiology and it's even tougher on your 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 mental side because you get all these scary th thoughts that are oh, oh my god am i freezing my toes off am i gonna die so the all these every morning when i jump into the sea uh now it's six degrees so you really feel a little bit of gasp already when you six into the water <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah. it will turn into zero it will turn into zero and that's a real deal that's a real deal <laughs> So, uh, and the wind is coming from the sea very hard. So it's like, oh my God, why am I doing this? And so, so that's one, uh, my mind telling myself a story. So I, yeah, okay, that was an interesting story. And I keep walking. Then the next story is uh, like, like somebody tempting me. What about if you don't go today? Wow, that's a very interesting story also. Let's see what is this leading. Are you sure you don't have a cold? Mm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of it. Well, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> so, so, so uh, about about entering this uh, very uncomfortable zone, it, it is a uh, it's a conscious attempt uh, to to get comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. So that could kind of leak over into your whole life. Yes. So uh, all uncomfortable <laughs> yes. situations in your life, you could take them like a grain of salt. Okay, it's happening. What's the story in my mind? Well, that was an interesting story. Very much thank you. But what's the reality? Like in cold water, what's the reality? It's cold. Yeah, it's freezing. Uh, it feels unpleasant. Sorry, that was the interpretation. That was a story. Cold mm. is the only reality. And when... Uh, so the the circumstances is so tough it forces you to stay pr present yeah. so it's like, like a turbocharged vipassana wow it makes sense i i can mm. see that man all right well <clears throat> after speaking with you and frank i guess i have to come to finland and and give it a try <laughs> <laughs> but because i'm in florida now what is my next best option I saw you have a a course online that yeah. Uh, you then know, you need cold water, you need cold shower or, or ice bath yourself. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm not confident in the uh, 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 ice cold shower you have in in, in Florida. It's not very I, cold. I suppose it doesn't yeah. go. Uh, it, it's not cold. Let, it's let's not cold. get it straight. It's yeah. not cold. It's not even close to cold. <laughs> For me, it is, but for you, no, it'd be like a hot, hot shower. So I, so I get an ice bath. Is your philosophy or theory or instruction with students to every? It sounds like you go in every day. Is that you? You do it every day. Even is that your ritual? I I, That's, yeah. It, but it's like it's like uh, do, doing the yoga practice. Yeah. Uh huh. Except uh -huh. I don't take days off. You don't take any days off. On the cold. In the cold on the, in the yoga, yes. Every opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Every opportunity. <laughs> but in the cold, I mean, Magnus, this is just amazing. I mean, I, I love I love getting a chance to hear this because I think, you know, just based on my own experience, I, I, I just that that just it sounds so challenging, but I understand you're in the environment and so it's it's a part of you and it, and it's not so extreme because you're living. You're just living life. So I, I, but it yeah. just, it just sounds, uh, so amazing. So fantastic. Like challenge, like such an incredible challenge. That's amazing. I mean, so I, I'm just trying to even envision Finland in the middle of winter, not a lot of sunshine. I don't, how many hours of, of sun, sunlight comes out? What, what's the, like in the, on, well, in, in the South, uh, we have daylight during Christmas, like six hours, six hours, but, but in the north of Finland, no daylight at all. None at all. The further you go, the, the longer is the night. And you're in the south because you're on the, like you I said, the archipelago. The yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and and you're you're walking out and you're you're waiting for that daylight time or you don't even care. You you go in the pitch black dark. I mean, what where do you draw the line here? Do you, do you actually go yeah. while it's dark and, and still jump in the ice as well? Yeah, I, I do. 
if I if I wake up before the daylight, yeah, and, and uh, uh, I, I I aim for first doing my cold swim, and then doing some warm up warm up exercises, and then I'm having my coffee. So. Wow. Before the coffee, yeah. Before the coffee, <laughs> the coffee is the, maybe the reward at the end of the end of the session, yeah. <clears throat> and then and the warm I, fire, and the warm fire, <laughs> and the warm fire, and then I'm curious. So then, just to kind of continue on with your day, then at this point, you mentioned Ashtanga and or yoga practice and Vipassana meditation, which probably, yeah. if you're a dedicated Vipassana practitioner, you're meditating twice a day for an hour each time. Are you not uh, enough? Uh, I'm 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 flexing the concept. I'm flexing the concept of Ashtanga. I'm flexing the concept of Vipassana. I'm flexing everything. I love it. Can yeah. you can you tell me how, just in relation to your Ashtanga and Vipassana, mm. how are those two worlds meeting for you now? Because if if you have this open minded approach of okay, there's these structures, but now mm. what's going to work for me? What what are you finding when you are blending? these two together. Cause I personally, I found when I got a chance to go to Vipassana, it really put the icing on top of the cake for me. I feel like before that I had the cake, I was loving my yoga practice and I was reading, you know, uh, philosophy, yoga philosophy. And then when I went to Vipassana, I felt like, Ooh, I think I, I think I got a glimpse into what this yeah. philosophy was talking about and what I might be attempting to do. And I really had this strong feeling that if I didn't do Vipassana, I would have never had this opportunity to really understand what the this deeper layer of the yoga holds for us. And so yeah, I'm saying, thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what sort of uh, for, insights yeah, for, you have? For, yeah. for me, I, I, uh, when, when I start practicing, so so actually the, the mor morning uh, getting ice cold is just something that happens. I don't even consider it practice. Uh, I start with I start from the more subtle going to the the stronger one. So I start with vipassana, and uh, uh, before I got this epiphany about about carbon dioxide, uh, I always started with the more subtle, the vipassana, then pranayama, and then ashtanga practice. Uh, uh, but but nowadays it's like I'm starting with uh, breath control. So I'm breathing less. I'm, I'm doing uh, kumbhaka on exhalation uh, as much as possible. So I really get this uh, to cultivate this uh, ear hunger. You know the, the sense of you have to breathe more, but then you're not allowing yourself. So you, you could be, let's call it ear hunger. So cultivating ear hunger for twenty minutes, and then letting that go, and going into scanning the body like in vipassana. And noticing what ha happened, and that, that that's a very wonderful turn. On. So I <clears throat> I find that you could actually learn to meditate in a much easier way than it's taught in the vipassana co concept by by taking the the con concept of breath by by breathing less, uh, understanding carbon dioxide, understanding. The autonomic nerve system. Uh, so, I have a concept uh, like like, like uh, breath, the por the the portal for to meditation. Right. So, so let's see how 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 that works out. Yeah. <laughs> On the okay. Yes. Oh, these are great ideas. I do like the fact that you're mapping out a specific. <clears throat> Start with air hunger. Yeah. Do the body scan, and, meditation, and then yeah. and, and then you can do a phys physical practice a few like physical, Ashtanga. Yeah. Start start with the sun salutations and see how far that takes you. Mm. Uh, that's the only concept I have. So yeah. let's see how far this takes me. Yeah. No, no main agenda. I'm going to do first and second and third series all in one session. <laughs> There's somebody out there doing it. There's somebody out there doing it, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I love that theory. I, I keep, uh, you know, we have a, I, I have a Mysore program or Mysore Stylish Jungle program here. And I am trying to constantly 
get that point across right in the beginning that if we just do sun salutations, that's a complete practice. And you can come in, you can come in, you can just do sun salutations. Cause I remember my mind getting so trapped in that, like I have to do the whole primary. Like there's no question. I just have to do it. There's just, just not, yeah. a, <clears throat> there's no way yeah, around me it. Too, 50 yeah. years ago. <laughs> I was so kind of dedicated. <laughs> I was so uh, kind and, of dedicated. Good way to say it. Yeah. Yes. I, I was pretty stiff. Uh, so uh, I mean, kapotasana w- was always my horror, and but uh, st- <laughs> stiff but strong. So my teacher Lino Miele o- always t- told his uh, assistants that practice on Magnus uh, the the adjustments. You can't break him. <laughs> 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 it's safe to practice with Magnus. You you can't break him. <laughs> so you had you had two people oh, pulling God. on you in Kapotasana. Right. One person pulling your hips forward from the front, and another one trying to push your hands to your your feet from the from your from the other side. That was my first. That was my first Kapotasana experience. Uh, it was Lino was pulling my hips forward. His <laughs> wife at that moment, uh, Tina, was pushing my hands to until uh, they touched my toes, and uh. I was like. Wow, this is really yoga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the real deal right here. Yeah, talk about thinking uh, like you know you're you're you know these experiences all seem like uh horizontal in similarity that you're saying okay, I'm in the ice, are my toes going to fall off? Am I going to die? You're in kapotasana adjustment. Is my back going to snap? Am I am I going to survive? And so there's these in Vipassana, interestingly enough, you know, if, if, if you go for a real long sit, I remember one time I, cause the early morning sits or like in the afternoon where you get those, like you would do like a hour and a half and then you have a little break and then you get like another hour and a half where you get these three hour stretch. And I, I remember saying to myself, all right, that's it. I'm going to sit for three hours and I'm not going to move. I'm just not going to move. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay. And I did actually hang in there for the three hour stint. And I thought wow. I was going to, I thought I was going to die. Like I really thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was going to die. I'm, I'm just <laughs> sitting here. I'm not going to die. But so it's incredible because in all of these disciplines, they can get taken to such an incredible level of, like you said, acclimation. Obviously there's an acclimation period. I mean, if someone on day one comes into my sore and you say, okay, let's go straight to Kapotasana, you know, it could be, it could be really dangerous. <clears throat> Don't you, I, I'm just, it, it could be, it could be, there could be harm there. You know what I mean? Like, so I guess that's my next question is how have you danced that line with loving yourself or loving therapeutic and taking care of yourself, but also getting a little close to the edge. I'm sure you've gotten a little close to the edge in the ice element. It sounds like you had to have gotten close to the edge, especially on that one hour sit from 45 minutes, like to an hour, a 15 minute increase. Like when we look at the way the free divers build up that little bit further depth, a little bit further depth, I mean, it's mm-hmm. dangerous to all of a sudden just say, I'm going to go three more meters, you know, and, and to us, it doesn't sound mm-hmm. like much, but that's a lot. So I, I guess, um, what have you learned in this, process of exploring edges and yeah. maintenance of of uh, self-care okay in, in the area of cold exposure what, what i learned because i i'm my own guinea pig so i i try to do or uh, i did try to do uh kind of find all the mistakes you can do and, and report back and say don't do this mm. <laughs> So the, the thing is, uh, the only thing you should really uh, try to avoid is hypothermia. And, but hypothermia comes in uh, different uh, levels. So the first stage of hypothermia is when you start shivering. It's not dangerous, and it's even very stimulating for, for your fat burn, but it activates brown fat even more. Effectively, and, and what it means is your core temperature gets down to 35 degrees cent, uh, Celsius, and that's okay. But but the thing is, if you if you start shivering in the ice cold water 
and you are in the winter, when you're coming up from that, you're still getting chilled down. And okay, and then you get get up in, in, into the house. Uh, there is room temperature, and you have a core temperature that is is okay, and you feel okay. Slight shivering doesn't matter. You think you survived, but the thing is, you have this uh, 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 layer of ice cold blood really uh, close to your skin. So it's got, so you have two different temperatures. You have your surface temperature, you have your core temperature, and they start equalizing. And if they equalize too fast and you are not trying actively to raise your core temperature, your core temperature will drop significantly. And that feels terrible. <laughs> you really start shivering. Wow. And, uh, that, but that's also, if you are a healthy person, it's okay. It's okay, but it's very unpleasant. And it's all kind of uh, perception. So uh, I did this major mistake once uh, that uh, I came from a very long session in the cold, came in from the winter cold, it went straight into a hot shower. And the sensation of that was like somebody took their fist and hit my heart. So I had to get down on all fours. Whoa. Because it was it was really it really, really took all the juice out of me, and I was kind of a, 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 a shivering mess of, of, of a, un, <laughs> a mess of a person for for five minutes. Oh. But I also heard from from a different person they have had experienced it for twenty minutes before before they could get up. Wow. But then we have the other other side of it. Uh, after a couple of years of that, for example, after my one hour session in, in the ice bath, I got straight into the cold shower, I, the, in the hot shower, and it didn't worsen my situation at all. Wow. Because at that point, I was also <laughs> adapted to this uh, uh, situation. So it, actually, you can adapt, adapt to anything. But that's really hardcore. It's really hardcore. And then if you have and then if you have, how do you perceive it? Kind of, what's your interpretation when you start shivering like like a mad and you can't say a straight word and your your brains go like, click, click, what, what, what? Is that, uh, do you make anything out of it? Is this a bad thing or is this a neutral thing? Is this a good thing? So if you can stay kind of curious and, hey, what's going on? Then it's all right. For example, this uh, free diver Johanna Nordblad, we discussed, discussed hypothermia. And I said, well, I was once half an hour in a kind of really strongly shivering state. And she said, well, I once uh, forgot myself photographing under the water too, too, too long in the winter. And I shivered for four hours afterwards. <laughs> I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> And, you know, her only comment was, it was so interesting. <laughs> just curious and open to to just observing. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 Not, not <clears throat> making anything, not making stories out of it, not attaching uh, or, or not aversions, mm. and nothing. Mm. It's like this mm. happens. Mm. How interesting. So, I mean, do you think so? If you hadn't come across deep meditation practices like Vipassana, do you feel like you would have, these experiences would have brought you to that place and or taught you that without needing to receive instruction from the Vipassana? Or do you feel like the Vipassana instruction has given you further understanding so then it's a little maybe you, you can trust yourself a little more when you get into that space of wondering uh-oh is this have yeah. i actually pushed too far then wait that's right my training is yeah. just observe yeah, the, the thing is i've done this all by myself mm. with uh, no instructions so then the vipassana teachings uh, uh were, were kind of my instructor yeah so yeah. i i imagine if you don't have the vipassana background, but you have a good instructor who's telling you mm. now what to do <clears throat> yeah. and what what not to do, 
uh, and how to take it step by step and how how does your 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 the physiology of your breath really work what what's the blood circulation thing it's like when you breathe less you have more carbon dioxide and that delays your your blood vessels which is the opposite of what the cold water does so then you get less pain in your fingers and the toes because the blood is still circulating yes Oh man, Magnus, I've been learning so much. I, I feel like the way you're explaining it, I'm starting to understand. Like the way you kind of mentioned the core temperature and a cold layer of blood on the on the surface, I've never visualized that before, but it's starting to make really good sense how it actually how the physiology responds mm. to the environment. This is so fascinating. So I saw a picture on Instagram <clears throat> where you it looks like you were teaching some type of class and there's a there's people in red they, and they must be dry suits i guess i'm guessing they're yeah. dry suits they're they in these, nice. and and there's like about 10 people in red dry suits and you're you're in a speedo like just skinning it and they're all floating also- uh, in lotus yeah i think you have your legs in lotus and your arms above your head and you're just like floating what was going on there because I, I saw the, I didn't, I, Instagram will luckily translate from Finnish over into English. Um, when I went to your website, I was trying to find a way, because I, I want to direct everybody to your information, but just to let them know, uh, is there a way to read your website in English? I saw you have a blog in English, so I was able to get some yeah. information. Well, yeah, it's experimenting in writing in English, because I, I'm, right now I'm, I'm writing in either Swedish or, or Finnish. Wow, um, yeah. Uh, Amazing. Uh, so, uh, incredible. Finnish is my first language. Yeah. Uh, uh, Finnish is my second, and uh, English is my third. Gotcha. And I'm I'm also fluent in German. Well done. I mean, your less, your English is fluent, incredible. Yeah. yeah. How do you? I less mean, fluent in French and Spanish. Wow. You know, that's what just I love about Europe. I'm just oh, every time I've gotten a chance to go to Europe, and I'll meet these kids that are like five years old, speaking four languages, and here in the states, I. You know, I was encouraged to maybe try to learn another language, but it's just a different vibe. You know, I love that about Europe that there's, yes, you are going to learn language or it's not, I don't know. It's just a whole different mentality around it. And and the exposure, I suppose, obviously has a big help, but still for you to traverse that many different languages, that's incredible, Magnus. I mean, impressive. Um, so, so you, is that, is that you? I know you, it's, it's just life. Are, Are you, are you, are you, um, teaching a course with that like if if i come to finland and you and i go yeah. i come take a course are you going to put me in a dry suit first <laughs> oh, i'll be no. happy about that please put me no, no, no. <laughs> what is that, going that, on there yeah yeah what's going on there they say i i'm doing cooperation with with uh, uh, adventure company who t- takes the the customers out in the archipelago and put on these uh, uh, survival suit, suits uh. and ma- make make them float around just to enjoy it and then, then I jump in, and I, I, I start swimming in my only swimsuit around them, and do a kind of guided relaxation for them. And then, then they slowly start wondering, what is this guy doing? <laughs> what is going on? And, and then, uh, uh, that's just to spice it up. And when they get back on the dry, the leader of the expedition, Leif. He's telling them about the dangers of hypothermia. And they are, wow. And, and then he, he ends his 15-minute speech, but this obviously doesn't apply for magnets. Oh my gosh. And then I do a 15-minute speech of, uh, uh, of adaptation and physiology, and they get the experience, like a kind of first-hand experience of, wow, this is a large planet. <laughs> this is a large planet. I love it. That is so awesome, Magnus. That's so classic. There's another really beautiful video that you posted, in my opinion, of an ice hole with several women uh, in the in the in the water, kind of hanging on to the edge of the ice, and they're singing. Yeah. And they're singing yeah. a song, and I'm guessing that's Finnish, right? That's that's is. They are, they are singing it in Swedish. In Swedish, and it, uh, yeah, it, it's from a, a very famous uh, uh, film, 
And the music is by a, a very famous Finnish uh, composer. Uh, the very beautiful words. <coughs> it's a, uh, it's from a film about Stormsia's Maya, about a, a family living very far out in the uh, archipelago, living from fishing and like fishing like one hundred years ago. It made it was made uh, it, it was a novel and it was made into a very famous uh, TV series and it's going to be a very soon a new uh, uh, film again. So it, it's a this uh, uh, this melody you heard, uh, uh, every Finn recognizes it. Wow! And they, they, these were ladies who were so dedicated. They were they were winter swimmers from before, but they want a new level of it. I, as you see, they got it. <laughs> they got it, and the, yeah, I, I could. Yeah, there's something I guess that what's amazing about song and a group singing together is that mm. even though they were being going through this really intense rigorous ice bath that somehow the song just gave them some power to communicate something it's a really amazing it was touching i, I watched it a couple mm. of times i was like wow and it was really yeah. beautiful that that was so i do highly recommend everybody listening please check out uh your instagram page <clears throat> which is uh oh help me out magnus remind me ice lab method ice lab method thank you Wow. This has been such a treat, Magnus. I just am so thankful for you opening up time out of your day to share a little bit of your life and, and what, what your days exist. Um, what your days are like, is there anything, is there anything you can add or something that I might, I might've missed that, that you would like to share? Is there any other, uh, uh, you know, something I love about podcasting, the opportunity to speak with people all over the world, also your generosity. Obviously we had an introduction through Frank, but your, your openness and willingness to communicate and, and come on the show and, and do this. I, I really appreciate that. I, I just find that fascinating that you all are <laughs> so eager and keen because I love doing this. I learned so much. I think to actually speak with people on the ground in the water, in the ice water to actually hear like what this is, <laughs> what is going on here? Cause it's such a, it's a very, it's very popular right now, right? Like I, I saw a comedian on Instagram recently say basically, all right, everybody, I know you're ice bathing. We, we know you took an ice bath today. It seems like, um, it's huge. Uh, in, in the plaza where our yoga studio is, there's a cryotherapy center, there's, you know, there's places all around where people can ice bathe. Can you, can you just touch a little bit upon, I remember listening to somebody say that he was struggling with depression, uh, mental health issues, and that his ice bath a day has helped him to regulate that without needing medication. Uh, I'm curious, what, what has been your uh, effect, what have you found in relation to mental health and the positive yeah. effects? Yeah, that yeah ice the, it has, the, the ice bath has, uh, Kind of physiological hormonal effect also, which is that it's a huge booster in dopamine, and dopamine is the hormone of anticipation and motivation. So it's actually something that gets you really going. So so it, it's a huge elevator of, of that hormone, and uh, uh, in opposite to social media, where every dopamine peak gets your baseline do lower this doesn't so it gets your it get, gives you a peak of, of like uh magnitude of, of cocaine kind of and which lasts and doesn't get down your baseline that's one one thing on the mental side but the what, what i think uh, find is uh, the most important thing is uh, like let, let's uh, uh, see, when, when you get into the cold, the physiological re reaction, the hyperventilation, your blood pressure is the same as when you you are afraid, when you really get scared. You get, it's the same reaction, but uh, you are in a safe space, so you can get back into a very calm state if you know how to breathe, if you prepare yourself. And then try to stay there. And every time you do it, it's kind of you are changing your unconscious behavior just a little bit and a little bit. So uh, like every fear-based emotion 
gets easier. Mm. And anxiety is fear-based. And uh, I, I talk about this with, this with uh, psychotherapists, and they are kind of, this is a totally correct uh, interpretation of the situation. You, so you, you, get, uh, you're, you're, you get a bit kind of more normal by doing this. You, mm. you get rid of mm. fear-based emotions. Mm. Yeah. And for me, when I started doing this very strongly, uh, uh, I got so much more liberated talking talking in front of a group, teaching new groups. Like I, I, I stopped planning because I knew I know I know my stuff. Why why not just go in front of them, and open your mouth, and see what comes out? Oh, this is exciting! Mm. Uh, and so, <laughs> in a positive way, I got totally reckless. And I say that. Yeah. So, awesome. so, so, uh, one, uh, what really helped was like, uh, more than two years ago when the, during the pandemic when the restrictions got too tough for our yoga studio, which we had been running for eight and a half year. Oh, wow. So we, we had to close it down and uh, we, uh, so we, we, uh, moved out of the city into our summer cottage where we're living still. This is debt free. There we are no cost except electricity for this. So when, when you when you really cut all costs, you can live on very very little. So it's so interesting. I do only gigs now. I do weekend courses, uh, workshops, and uh, I. Uh, it's such a different way of living from from being teaching uh almost every morning for 20 years mm. i i don't do that anymore yeah but how how to to kind of switch to that after the initiating grief of letting go of of your life work it was like wow this is so interesting yes. and it is still interesting yes <clears throat> i'm so happy you just said that magnus because i've been thinking about that a lot lately it, it, it very similar in relation to my wife and I've had this studio for the last 17 years and mm -hmm. we made it through the pandemic and we've been teaching oh, every day. I know. Uh, and, but it was very challenging and uh, now there's still so many challenges and I, and I, and I often wonder like, what, what, what am I going to do? And I love hear I love hearing that you've, you had that same challenge and, uh, you let, and because I, I love my, I love this so much that I feel I would have grief at loss of it, which I know is just a human thing. But when you do something for so long, I just don't want it to change. I, I love this so much, right? So, I, but I, but hearing what you said, I, I, it gives me a lot of hope because you're having yeah. just as much fun, if not more. You've been able to transition. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. One last question or one last thought. Um, I, I, my first yoga, my first Hatha yoga world experience was practicing with Bikram Chowdhury in Los Angeles, California, taking wow. Bikram yoga teacher training back in 2000 and hotter than you can ever imagine. Hotter than hot. He tried to kill us. I think much with a similar idea, extremes, how are you going to, how are you going to handle it? How, so, but then you get this culture of mentality of like, I can only do yoga if it's 115 degrees. If I go into the room and it's 105, it's not hot enough. I'm mad and people get upset and they're like, turn the heaters up higher. It's just not hot enough, which is an interesting kind of insanity because when you're, you know, I saw a picture of you down dogging on the ice, practicing down dog on the, on the ice. And you're just sure. debunking that whole theory. No, it does not need to be hot to do yoga. I, you, I actually think you could do you yoga is better in the cold or just as good. And this whole idea of like, you need to, yeah, you're like, you're wobbling your head. Like, well, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, thoughts on that. Like, I guess control, we want to control, and we th we have preferences, 
And so mm-hmm. we think I have to have the environment controlled so that I can do what I need to do. What is your experience mm-hmm. with just practicing in whatever environment there is? And then your experience with practicing on ice. Yeah. Uh, I, I normally, I normally don't practice on ice. <laughs> okay, <fair enough. laughs> but, but, but actually, actually, sometimes during the winter, when when, it, when it's not too windy, I come up from the ice bath and I start doing yoga uh, on the terrace in minus degrees, uh, still wet, na- naked, uh, and I, I co- continue that t- till I'm dry. But that's just. Uh, out of curiosity, it's like the question: Can you can you really do it? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah, yeah. yeah is it possible? Yeah. Uh, should you do it this way every day? Mm, I don't think so. I, I I think I think you come to a to a place somewhere sometimes in life when you you just curious. So, can I do it in this way or can you do it in that way? Yeah, and, and that, that's why. What it keeps me going, really? Yeah. And this is about uh, uh, should it be hot or cold? Doesn't matter. The the heat comes from inside. You really have to to get get that one to get sweaty, even if it's cold. Yeah. If that's your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, Magnus. <clears throat> oh man. Well, thank you. thank you so much. This has been an amazing hour, and even a little beyond. Uh, I, I can't wait to publish this. I, <laughs> my, my dad and sister used to fly to Canada to go ice bath. So I'm thinking, and my daughter, she loves the cold. Last time we were in the snow, she was running around barefoot in the snow. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are, you, we got to get you over to Scandinavia. <laughs> like you're, you're going to have to live somewhere much colder. She's always so hot in Florida and her face is all red. And uh, I'm like, she's going to have to live somewhere cold. So I, I got to get her over to Finland. I think that'd be a really fun yeah. family trip. Yeah. So I, I hope yeah. to have a chance to meet you, Magnus. This has been a real treat. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. It, it's really been a treat for me to talk to somebody on the other side of the globe. I mean, <laughs> this is amazing. I'm sitting here isolated on an island together with my wife. There's nobody else here. And then I'm speaking to somebody in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Magnus. I'll see you soon. (laughs) Native Yoga Toddcast is produced by myself. The theme music is dreamed up by Bryce Allen. If you like this show, let me know. If there's room for improvement, I want to hear that too. We are curious to know what you think and what you want more of what I can improve. And if you have ideas for future guests or topics, please send us your thoughts to info at Native Yoga Center. You can find us at nativeyogacenter.com. And hey, if you did like this episode, share it with your friends, rate it and review, and join us next time.